Alright, so I want to talk about quite possibly one of the best deals out there. Pre-owned video games. Sure, they may have more stories to tell than a library with how much they've been passed around, but at the end of the day, you got to save a few bucks over the poor chump who bought it new before you. Pre-owned games have pretty much been around nearly as long as gaming itself. Similar to books, music, and movies, being able to resell and pass around a video game is just one of the many benefits of physical media. Not everyone wants to hoard their games forever, so they turn them back into the game stores. Usually this will go towards store credit, or sometimes just straight up cash, which in turn they can use to get other games. It's a positive feedback loop for both the retailers and the customers. The customer is going to get a discount towards their next game because of the trade-in credit, and the retailer gets to profit off of well, essentially selling a product twice. This relationship is what allows me to go in and dig through those shelves at GameStop and get brand new releases for a discounted price. There is a catch, however, that being that publishers don't make any sort of profit from pre-owned game sales. Anything that is brought in with the sale of a pre-owned video game goes straight to the game store, and publishers are more than aware of this. So, stay tuned, because I will be going over the pros and cons of pre-owned games, as well as some of the tactics publishers are implementing to discourage buying second-hand games, all on this very first episode of is it worth saving five dollars? Yeah, I don't think we're getting greenlit for a full season. Ah, the second hand video game, where one man's trade-in can become another man's treasure. Or, you know, an another trade-in just waiting to happen. I love pre-owned games. I personally have never minded the fact that someone owned the game before me. As long as the disc and cartridge is still playable, it really doesn't matter if you got the game brand new or if there was 20 owners before you. There have been whole businesses built on the idea of passing games along. Sure, Blockbuster was mostly known for movie rentals, but another huge part of their brand was game rentals. A similar deal with Redbox allowing customers to rent games for a limited time before returning them. Now, the only company I can really think of that still rents games out as their main motif is Gamefly, which, yeah, if you didn't know they were still around, they are. But even looking outside of just gaming rentals, which are guaranteed to expose you to pre-owned or used video games, most game stores wouldn't even exist without the second-hand video game market. Sure, we've got GameStop who has their whole trade-in system where for your PS5 and 20 games they'll give you 73 cents and at best a chewed up DS stylus, but tons of local mom and pop shops only exist because they're able to sell the pre-owned games that walk through their storefront. It goes without saying, but pre-owned video games are everywhere. There are collectors who exclusively seek out new and sealed games for their collection, but I actually like to play my games, so I love when I can find pre-owned games for a discounted price. Or better yet, finding an older game that is no longer in print or available on digital stores. The retro game market is really where used games shine the most. Nothing beats the feeling of looking through the game section of an older console generation and sorting through all the old EA Sports games no one wants anymore to find a hidden gem. For example, about a year ago I was going through some bins of old Japanese Nintendo 64 game carts and found a copy of Paper Mario, one of my favorite games not only for that console, but just favorite games overall. I was so excited about that. The cartridge may not be the prettiest, and it's definitely been around the block a few times, but it still plays no problem at all. If you do care about the quality, I totally understand that. I have my personal standards for what is acceptable, and I try to get the best quality I can find, but at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to accept that used games are not always going to be in the best condition. Heck, even supposedly new games aren't always the best. I remember when I got Tales of Symphonia at GameStop, and it was labeled as new. I paid for the new pricing, but I ended up getting the case that was on the display rack. Which normally, I would say that wouldn't be such a big deal, but for this situation, my game case had a huge slice out of the front of it. I was pretty upset when I got home and realized this, and to make matters worse, I didn't even end up liking the game. It's just the sad case that sits on my collection, and I can't even say I like the game when I look at it. Sure, pre-owned games may be in a questionable condition with that one weird sticky spot that like no one can really explain, but at least I can expect that with secondhand games. But a supposedly new copy that has physical damage to the case is absolutely unacceptable. At least when I'm getting a pre-owned game at GameStop, 
I know what I'm getting myself into because it is the case that's on the display rack that I take to the cashier to check out. Except when it isn't! I once had GameStop try to switch out the case I brought to the checkout with one that had much, much worse damage to it. It looked absolutely mangled and torn up. I made them give me the case that I brought up and they seemed very confused of why I would actually care and want to switch that out. Uh, but yeah, those are just the gambles you get when you're buying pre-owned games. You know what I've always wondered? You, you know when you're looking at the pre-owned games and there are the cases with the generic store art or just a sleeve of paper with the game's title on it? How, how does that happen? And I, I don't mean someone traded in a loose disc and they kind of just threw it in a case they had lying around. No, no, no. They have the original case, the manual sometimes, the game is in perfectly fine condition, there's just no box art. How do you lose that? I just talked about reversible cover art, so I have my fair share of experience of taking out the box arts from game cases, and let me tell you, that is a very intentional thing that you have to do. But yeah, I wasn't really going anywhere with that, I just kind of wanted to bring it up. So, uh, insert clever transition here. How do publishers fight back against secondhand game sales? Like I said before, game publishers don't make any money from a pre-owned game sale. That all goes towards whoever sold it. Well, there are a few different methods that can be used, some more frowned upon than others, to get around this. First of these that I noticed was digital codes that were put inside game cases. Sometimes this would be to activate a multiplayer mode or to get some sort of exclusive content in-game so that buying a game pre-owned there is a near 100% certainty that previous owner used those codes up, so if you want the full experience that that game has to offer, you're going to need to pony up and buy a new copy. Another way publishers are trying to get revenue off of pre-owned game sales is through DLC. Sure, even someone who bought the game new will end up having to buy the DLC as well, but this guarantees that even if someone got the game secondhand, they're still going to be giving money to the publishers if they decide to buy that DLC. There are also battle passes and endgame store currencies that players have access to buy in some games. All in all, I don't blame developers and publishers for wanting to profit off of their game further into its life cycle when pre-owned copies are starting to go around more and more frequently. Sure, I may not be a fan of battle passes and in-game shops, but when it comes to DLCs, I mean, I already saved money getting the game cheaper with it being pre-owned, so even with buying the DLC, I would still be getting a better overall deal on that gaming experience. Also, DLC is not mandatory. The last thing that I haven't touched on yet is the digital-only ecosystems, games, and storefronts. This is something that's getting more and more popular with each console generation, and I remember when the first digital consoles were being announced and thinking, who in their right mind would limit themselves to a digital-only system? Uh, but turns out, lots of people don't mind that. Now, I'm a huge PC gamer with tons of digital games on my Steam library, so it is a little hypocritical of me to judge those who want a digital-only console. But where I'm ultimately trying to go with this is that you miss out on a lot of the benefits of pre-owned games when you stick to exclusively just digital. Obviously, there is the massive incentives for players who go with pre-owned games with a discounted price, and if you are someone who likes to trade in games, you're just going to get into that positive feedback loop. Alongside all that, too, is picking up games pre-owned is just a better alternative overall to those games being thrown away and trashed. I mean, the gaming market was once really known for flooding landfills, so it's Good we're not keeping that up anymore. There is also the simple fact that if a digital ecosystem is taken down, you lose all of those games. We've seen small examples of this with digital storefronts closing on older consoles. Sure, if you had the games installed, you can still play them, but actually accessing some of those older titles now is impossible without getting the physical editions. The Wii U, for example, had an eShop that just closed down. It had an amazing selection of games, but now that it is closed, there's no legitimate way to access some of those titles unless they're added to the Switch or some upcoming Nintendo console. Now, I will admit I'm starting to get into the territory of physical versus digital content, but pre-owned games are a huge part of why you can argue physical is better. I took a quick look through my collection of games, and if it weren't for me getting them pre-owned, I would probably have less than half of the games I currently own. And that's not to mention all the older retro stuff which is guaranteed to be pre-owned. So yeah, sure, my game may have this weird smell and 
questionable substance leaking out of it, but that just means it has history. With every missing box art and scratch on the disc, there's a story behind that. I don't want to know those horror stories, but they are there, and that history is worth it to me for saving a few bucks, because I may not have $60 for the new Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake, but I sure do have 55 and the patience to wait two weeks.